here at the Weybridge factory, they're still building around 15 super blowers a year by the time-honoured craftsmanship, hand assembly and hand building methods. But at AC, the emphasis has switched very much to the new car, the Ace, the car that broke the company. It's a lovely looking car. It reminds me a bit of the AC427 Frau convertible from the 60s. All the extras you'd expect for a car in this price range feels well screwed together too, and it is an off go. Now can't you just imagine yourself cruising down the seafronts at Nice in this car? It's exactly the right image, it's the right sort of weather, just take me to the ferry. Mind you, this is no boulevard cruiser. This car is fitted with the super blower engine we saw in the Cobra. You can have it in unsupercharged 5 litre form, or you can have it in 4.6 quad cam, the smoothest V8 around, which is designed for the new Mustang. And if you want to use it, the performance is there. 0 to 60 again, round about five seconds, maximum speed governed to 155 miles an hour. Back in the 1950s, when most cars on Britain's roads were of the Ford Pop or Morris Minor level of performance, AC Cars, one of Britain's oldest car manufacturers, came out with a jaw-droppingly beautiful sports car called the Ace, capable of 100 miles an hour. Now, the story of how Carroll Shelby subsequently shoehorned a fire-breathing Ford V8 into the chassis and created the brutal Cobra is the stuff of motoring legend. It's pretty much the mixture as before. Oh, I'm getting old. Take a big Ford V8, in this case the 5 litre supercharged 320 brake horsepower unit slotted into the same old body and chassis, make it meet uh, modern emission, noise and safety regulations slap on a price tag of £70,000 and Bob's your uncle. But of course there's far more to it than that. They've spent a great deal of time and money refining the car over the original Cobra. The first 289s and 427s were real animals. You were Driving them was like playing Russian roulette. You never knew when the bomb was going to go off. And if the Cobra did bite you, you knew it was going to be fatal. But that old Cobra trademark is still here in the super blower. And that's performance. 0 to 60 around 5 seconds. And maximum speed, well, when does your wig blow off and your false teeth fall out? It's still the best adrenaline pump that man has yet invented. Trouble with the AC original for me is the number of replicas on the market. Now, when any Tom, Dick or Harry can build a Sierra-based replica of this car for 12,000 quid, then spending 70,000 on the original starts to lose a bit of the charisma. Now we promised you an exclusive treat, and here it is. The AC Aseka, the second of the pillars upon which the future wealth and prosperity of AC cars will be based. It's the front end of the Ace. The wheelbase is lengthened by 240 millimeters and designed by Ron Saunders, their chief designer. It's a coupe with aluminum body and a full four-seater capacity. We first saw it at the motor show last year that car was a non-runner. They've been working on it here at Byfleet and now it definitely does run and we're going to be the first British team allowed to drive it. Now this after all is an engineering prototype so one respects the factory. We're not going to go for ultimate performance figures but uh, 
With a 4-cam V8 developing 320 brake, uh, AC estimate the 0 to 60 in around uh, five and a half seconds, and a governed maximum of around 155 miles an hour. It's the sort of car that's uh, designed for cruising across continents. Beautifully trimmed inside, as you'd expect. Lovely leatherwork, uh, nice walnut, good instrument display, and uh, all done in-house by AC themselves, which is quite surprising in these days when most components are bought out. A few shakes and rattles in this car, but as I say, you'd expect it in a prototype. And very good room for your mates in the back. It's difficult to form complete road impressions on such a short acquaintance, but very light steering. It feels extremely sure-footed with this width of rubber on the road. Nicely weighted steering, although it's a uh, full lot with some tire scrub that indicates they've got a bit of work to do on their steering geometry next. Borg Warner T45 gearbox with short throw, but they anticipate that when they get into production, automatics will be the preferred option. And in the crowded traffic conditions of uh, Weybridge, it doesn't overheat, it doesn't fart and bang like a performance car. It's starting to show its true colours as a quiet, dignified, gentleman's high-speed carriage. At the back, under the smooth lines, a tailgate lifts to reveal substantial luggage accommodation. There really is room for your golf clubs in here, and on the production versions, the seats will fold forward for more luggage capacity. Again, everything beautifully trimmed in suede and carpet. This is still very much a prototype. The tailgate will probably be a bit wider in production cars. Lovely shape. It reminds me of early Bristol 400s, uh, aerodynamic contours, and no bad thing for that. AC say the car will sell for £70,000 when it's launched. They're already working on car number two, and get your name down on the list, because they're only going to build initially about one a week. You always feel sorry for tiny little independent companies like this fighting for survival in a world dominated by the industry big boys. On the basis of our visit to Weybridge, the air of cheerful optimism is infectious. If effort and commitment count for anything, they do deserve to succeed. Let's hope there's enough people out there ready to lay out their cash in a very good cause.